Greetings, my friends, and welcome to the Easy Collar with Polka Dots. You know, this is a super fun project, and once I got the bugs out of it, it wasn't at all difficult. And I hope you agree, and I hope you enjoy it. I think it would be beautiful with uh, maybe Sculpey Pearl or Graphite Pearl. You could do it anyway. I've supplied you with some things in the uh, tinypandora.com Easy Collar Kit, including the bubble mat texture sheet. Uh, to make the indentations. But you know, the kit's got your uh, findings and uh, your templates. You do need to cut those out yourself and you'll see how to do it with the instruction. Uh, but uh, they're there for you to use in lots of different ways. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. I've tried to include enough things to really make it fun for you. You're also going to want to pick up a few uh, supplies at your craft store. The uh, etch and pearl tool is essential to this process. I tried it a lot of different ways. So look into that. Uh, there's more information down in the uh, description box. It kind of tells you about that. So I'm starting with two packs of Primo Black. I've sliced it up and made it into this shape. And you know, I think it's really helpful when you're using your clay machine to uh, have your clay begin in the shape that you want it to end up. And that's true of any project really. Uh, but this one especially because you don't want to struggle making nice even sheets. So I'm going to roll that through at about a number two. Um, that's uh, on my machine the third thickness, zero, one, two. And uh, you want to make a nice even sheet that's at least five by seven. So I'm using this Sculpey Texture Sheet in the Edgy Collection and I'm just making sure I have a real good impression on my uh, sheet of clay. You see I have excess there. And I'm going to pull that off, and um, it's got a really nice uh, pattern. That's going to go on the inside of the necklace. So I'm going to cut that out with my Easy Collar template. But see, that's a really neat texture, I think. It's really different. So you pop on your template like this, and as I said, you've cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And during that process, you know, you can make it thinner or thicker. So you can see that you could go deeper on your cut when you start. You could go larger. You could extend your ends if you wanted to. And that's kind of why I made it that way. It's adjustable. Once you've got it cut, uh, you've got another one to cut a different way or the same. Anyway, once it's um, ready to use, you lay it on your clay and just take a minute to make it some nice clean cuts around the edges. It's not going to damage your uh, template and uh, it's laminated with PE plastic, which does not react with clay. And um, you'll find it pretty easy to use. So I've got my little strip. You see it's pretty thin. It doesn't need to be thick. And I've got it face down on this glass bowl. And this is a chance I have to really adjust it. Do I want it wider? Do I want it smaller? <laughs> you know, you can place the ends uh, in accordance with the size that you want to make and spread them out a little bit for more of an open circle or you can kind of tighten them up. And once you've got them on your bowl, you want to bake that at uh, 275 for an hour. And while that's baking, you can just wipe off your template and we'll make our uh, polka dot sheet. Okay, you can use these over and over again. They're easy to clean. And as I said, you've got a spare one. So here's the next sheet that I've made. It's also on a number two. I used the excess clay from that first uh, sheet. And I've got all my colors. Um, I named them for you down in the description box. I'm using Souffle and uh, Primo in just some of my favorites that were left over. And you know, you'll find you have a lot of clay like that. It doesn't take much to make this project. I'm gonna lay out my sheet here and I'm going to get my bubble texture on it. So with the, the bubble side down, you want to lay it out on your black and smooth it in. Just make sure all the dents are kind of the same. Take your time. If you want to spritz out with water, you could, you know, but then you'd have to dry it, you know. So I just uh, pressed it in and now I've got my etch and pearl tools. I'm using the medium size. <clears throat> I've used those tools again and again and I just highly recommend them and I see them usually at Michael's. 
You can order them online too. So all you're doing now is you know that your uh, dots are going to fit in your little holes. And now, you know, I'm going to sit and obsess about exactly where to place them because uh, random is much harder than you think. So anyway, uh, that was the only hard part was just making them look the way I wanted them to look. You get a little little edge on any of them, like if it picks up a little, you know, furry edge, like uh, if it's ragged, just smooth it out so it looks nice and neat in the hole. And it's really pretty relaxing, you know. It did take me a little while to do this, but um, that's the Zen space. That's relaxing. I loved it. So there's the last one. My nice yellow, and that's a souffle canary. And take your deli sheets. You know, these really come in handy. You can get them in a box already small like this. Or you can use parchment. And just make sure all your dots are down really well. You don't have to use adhesive if you do that. And who's going to want to use adhesive? So now you just got your base and it's baked and it's cooled. Okay. And I'm going to pop on my bales, which are provided in the kit. I'm just using super glue for this. They're going to go back in the oven with, uh, you know, the top layer on them. Uh, and the super glue holds really well and it doesn't have any problems at 275 degrees. So there's no fumes or anything like that. So first of all, I'm going to freshen that spot, and that's really important every time you're using super glue. You know, anytime you're gluing on something onto your project and you don't want it to come off, just make a nice fresh tooth for that to hang on to. And that's a tip you're going to want to use in, in all your jewelry because it's so disappointing, you know, when it comes off. But just scratch it up a little bit, make it kind of rough, and then use your super glue in the hollow part of your bale and that just really works well for me and they've stayed on super well you put a generous amount but not enough that it slops out and I can't stand to get it on my hands I pop both of those on and we're gonna let those dry well and then we can take it off the bowl without hurting anything and we're just gonna pop it right off easy to do and you see our texture inside looks really cool and get ready to put the dots on here I'm gonna take my template and place it where I want to on the dots take a minute get them just the way you want them and take your time cutting through there you don't want to lean on it and you don't want to smear them okay and once your dots are cut out to your liking, um, you're going to want to put them on your uh, base that you made. So I just pull it off like this. You've got that nice big piece to use. I made a bracelet out of mine and I've got enough left for earrings and stuff. So, um, you know, take care of that uh, excess because it's uh, very useful. And we're going to get our main piece off. Take a lot of care with that too. You don't really want to stretch it, especially when you have dots like this, because then, you know, then they get kind of oval looking. Now you got your bacon bond. And I'm using this disposable brush because I am just, you know, loath to clean bacon bond off of a brush. And also, you know, I kind of have a thing about getting stuff on my hands. Now, this would probably be a lot better if you did it with your fingers, but I'm just not going to do it. So I placed a generous amount in the middle and then I'm going to take it and spread it to the edges. But you don't want it to squeeze out, you know, because then you got to clean it up. So I'm going to put it over the edge, kind of carefully, right over the glued on uh, bale. And once it's kind of distributed like that, then I can pull it down to the edge, kind of wispy. And that way it doesn't slop over. So, you know, I've done this a lot of times and uh, it's really best to have a good bond on the edges so you never have gaps there or anything. But take your time. You know, this, this bacon bond doesn't dry out like white glue does. So you kind of have a lot of uh, working time with it, I think. Now we're just going to lay our pretty dots on here and just kind of place it, you know, kind of as centered as you can to begin with. Because it slips and slides around. 
and you can really get it located the way you want to. Uh, I stretched out those ends when I was showing you how to <laughs> how to stretch out the ends. So uh, I just took some dot material and put it back on those edges. And it, it doesn't show at all. But uh, yeah, if you ever have a bad match like this one here because you played around with it too much, um, there's a million things you can do on those ends. Make textured pieces. It doesn't matter. It looks really pretty in the end product. So don't sweat stuff like that. I don't. So this is ready. You can see I've sort of rounded the edges. This looks really nice that way. It doesn't look sharp at all. Just take care with your dots that you're not smearing them or, you know, squeezing them too much. And get ready to bake her up. I'm going to show you my trick. Um, I wanted mine small because I like to wear them really high. And so I just put a little piece of wire in there and put it back on the bowl. So now I know it's going to retain its roundness and retain its size. And uh, that just really worked out. I just kind of thought it up at the last minute. So now it's just right and uh, it's baked. I can handle it. I'm not going to put any glaze on it because I kind of like that leathery look it has with the dots. I'm really pleased with the texture on the inside and the outside. So, you know, you can shine it up if you want to. It would be really pretty. You know, I think it would be gorgeous with, you know, all like Sculpey Pearl white dots or all of a metallic gold or silver. They've got that new sparkly kind to be really pretty in there. So I want to make more, a lot more dot necklaces, and that's why I put the dots in your kit because it's just way fun. So your chain, I've got. I'm going to cut mine pretty short. I have a pencil neck, and uh, I'm going to put it on here. <clears throat> if you take the uh, chain and you just put it on with the rings, and cut it afterwards, and you don't have to measure it so much and stuff. I know what my length finished is going to be. And you're just going to allow for the uh, toggle clasp. And you know, lots of people, different sizes, it's easy to change the size. If you're in a, you know, art show or uh, marketing situation where you're selling these, take some of your findings with you. If somebody wants a longer chain, it takes about two seconds to change it out. And you know, I think they like, they like that, the fact that they can have it just the way they want it. And you know, all clay is flexible, so it's pretty nice for all different size people. And once my chain's on, you know, I just kind of cut it in the middle and uh, take my two remaining rings and put the toggle on there. It's really easy to do. These are really basic kind of uh, jewelry tools. I think you're going to want to have them if you do any kind of stuff like this, because I know mine are just have been used to death but you know they come in really handy so your rings open like that you pop on your toggle and your project is just about done got gold and silver in there so that you can kind of make your project look the way you want to and all your little stuff comes with it so you don't have to hunt it down and that's finished I really hope you liked it I'm going to make videos of some of those other collars that you saw in the examples. So come see me at tinypandora.com. See you next time. Bye-bye.